All right. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Well, guess what? Back with another video. That's right, another tournament video. This one here is um, most important tournament of my life. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Most important tournament of my life. I've been doing this for 22 years. Spent 20 of those years on the FLW Tour. Had a great run over there. Was very blessed to win seven tournaments, I think, plus the championship, plus angle of the year. So I, I accomplished my goals over there. Fast forward to where we are now, Bassmaster Elite. Most important tournament in my life starts in about a week. You have to approach this tournament with the mentality of winner take all because there's no points. Second place means nothing. If you get second in this one, it's like awful. So we're leaving right now. We've got the truck packed. We came home after Harris Chain. We re repacked. I pulled out all my braid rods and all my flipping sticks and replaced them with light line, jerk baits, crank baits, shaky heads, drop shots, etc. I got six, I've never had six spinner rods rigged up in my life, but I have six spinner rods rigged up. Cause you know why guys? Do you know why? Do you know what we're talking about yet? We're talking about the Bass Masters Classic. That's the whole reason I'm over here on the elites. Every emotion you could probably have is what I have right now. So with all those emotions, I'm excited. We get three days of practice. It's kind of an interesting week. Three days of practice starting tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Then we're off Monday, Tuesday for some media events and things that we do for the Classic. Wednesday we have an official one day of practice. It ends at 3 o'clock, starts at like 7. Kind of like a tournament day. Um, and that's, you know, pretty intense eight hours of fishing. Then we're off on Thursday to get ready. We have like media day and then Friday when the show starts. dinner time and we pulled in and I and I feel bad for Bojangles I'm like really feeling bad because Bojangles is good like really good and there's not li there's literally not a single person at Bojangles like zero we've been here for a few minutes too not one person's gone through the drive-thru now next door they done this is bad Chick-fil-a showed up look 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 what we got here Chick-fil-a shows up next door we got a Bojangles customer though I think I might go to Bojangles just to give them some business. <laughs> I'm in Chick-fil-A. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm going to Chick-fil-A. Feeling bad for Bojangles, <laughs> man. All right. It was the cookies and cream milkshake that got me. I started thinking about it. I was like, they don't have... If they had a good cookies and cream, I would have went ahead and just done Bojangles. But I bet the only day that they're busy is Sunday. Just Chick-fil-A's closed. All right, we are here. Creepy. It's kind of creepy. But it's probably not creepy, but it's just kind of, it's just creepy anytime you pull up somewhere. What's that noise? Yeah, this is like Louisville all over again. We show no, up at it's night, not it's and it's crap. creepy. It's just like Louisville. Well, that was big. Oh, there's not even a door here. How do you get in? Hello? <laughs> Come on, let's go. You scared? No. You Can sure? Turn on the lights on. I think it's good. I think we're alright. Just turn some lights on and we'll be normal. Oh. Oh, garage door. <laughs> Foosball. Why? Garage doors only open manually. Oh, ping pong? Yeah. <laughs> this is ping pong, come on. <laughs> Six ones. Side on 
we're gonna fish tomorrow morning. You know, I've been here like, I don't know, five or six times in FLW events and one in a Bassmaster Open last year, two years ago. Fall event, finished fifth. I mean, I know the lay of the lake really well. I think it's gonna be a good tournament. I mean, I'm in shorts right now. It's gonna get a little chilly, you know, but for the most part, it's gonna be a warm classic. I mean, I think we're talking 70 degrees during the event. So, you know, I gotta kinda tomorrow learn a little bit about the lake. I think the largemouth bite is gonna be happening. I think the docks are gonna be warming up. I think it's gonna be a fantastic dock bite. I'm not, man, I'm not a huge dock fan, but I'm gonna be a dock fan this week. That being said, I'm gonna look through the graph tonight because I need to be very efficient in the morning. I need to go check a couple, couple little places where they might be hemmed up. And then uh, we'll get up in the morning, take you guys along on the water uh, for a little day one of practice. That's what we're going to do. We were going to do this as a travel vlog, but Matt's not here. He's staying home tonight. He'll come here tomorrow night. So I was like, you know what? Let's just nix a the travel vlog because we didn't have much other than the Bojangles thing. So I still feel bad for Bojangles. I'm going to give Bojangles some support from now on because... I actually had the Chick-fil-A, and I wasn't that impressed. It was a really good Chick-fil-A sandwich, but I'm telling you, Bojangles, is, they got it going on. Let's go to bed, get up in the morning, go catch some big old giant Bojangle bass, or at least shake them off. What? <laughs> Good morning. Been up since about four. Yeah. Got to go, man. All right, so here's the deal. Here, let me just see this. I'm going to hang out with for a minute. What's up? Good morning, everybody. Well, it is day one of practice right now. That's right. Cool little house right here, actually. It was a little, it was a little creepy at first, I have to admit. Because, but the, the thing is, look, when you first pull up to a place you're not familiar with, especially at night, it's kind of a little weird. Practice starts now, we get three days of practice. Then we're off a couple days doing a bunch of stuff and then we get one more day. So we kind of in essence get four days of practice, but it's kind of spread out a little bit. Real important to get out there early. Um, number two is, guys, this 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 is this practice video is gonna be serious, right? I mean, look, they're all serious. This is gonna be all about finding the fish to win, okay? Matt's not here yet, he'll be here tonight. We'll get to see him, talk to him a little bit. I'm taking you guys in the boat, chesty, camera, everything. Let's go find some fish. Stay focused. And let's go. Got a fire in my bones. Got some gold in my eye. You don't want to be my enemy. Oh, I fought through the night with the prize on my mind. Got a fire. here if there's seagulls here that means there's bait here and if there's oh boy there's seagulls a lot of seagulls if oh wow hey dudes what's up man Nice one. 
There was a big one with him, dude. Two and a half. Okay. And there's there's big ones on there. There's big ones on that dock. So the curveball in this whole thing is the water temp's like almost 60 degrees. It will be 60 degrees by the end of the day. And it's gonna cool back off a little bit, but these fish, I don't know. I don't know if the, if the temperature is gonna trick us or if the fish are gonna follow like they should. I don't know. Exactly. Oh yeah, oh, I got one. I got one. Little. Oh, there's another one with him. Yeah. Two pounder, the one with him. Oh, there's three with him, four with him. Well, that's a solid two pounder. I'm gonna weigh him just to make sure, but I don't think this is a two pounder. I think he's like, Pound, pound, pound six. Thanks, dude. Okay, bye. Catch all the two pounders you want, you still want to end up with 10 pounds. I know I'm setting the hook on these, it seems a little stupid, but it doesn't matter, anyways. I need to find some largemouth. I got two of them. I got one of them. <laughs> that was cool. I do. But again, this is like, uh, this is a trap. A little bit of a trap, right? Great. Fun. Awesome. We're not here for fun. We're here to win. That was cool, though. At least we're biting the tree. Now, we can get on a jerkbait bite on these docks. You can catch some bigger fish because you can fish a lot quicker. pounder with him. Oh my gosh, there's a freaking giant. Look at 
That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a two and a half. That's cool. I don't know how big this fish is, but we need to know. I think he's two something. He's not big. He's a little over two pounds. So that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. That's a fatty. Hey, buddy. I love you. I love you. Today was a, a decent day, but not still not the, maybe unlocked a little pattern with that chatterbait on the shallow docks, super shallow docks, like foot and a half deep, two foot deep. Some big ones are getting that kind of stuff. Just got to figure out how to re reproduce that in different places around the lake. But... I mean, I caught a lot of fish today. I'd say my best five would probably only weigh, with what I saw, what I think I had on, maybe 14. You're good there, yeah. It's probably as far Dinner as you're gonna ready? go. Yeah. Uh, we have rotisserie chickens. So it's ready? Yeah. Oh. Dude, you, you did the best of all. I mean, you somehow avoided. <laughs> I was trying to stay out of the mud, dude. It's I just so bad. washed my truck so and moved. I can't move. Jacob came into the I middle of the night. I don't understand that. He like, came into the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. That's stuck. That's stuck all up in this red Yeah, that's, that's bad, bad right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So dude, I went in that, I went in this one little creek had one, two, three, one around the corner had four, four bites. And then I looked on the map and I was like, all right, let me go to this next one, which it didn't quite look the same and I never had a bite. But then the sun got down and I think, I think they got off that deal. Did, did, I kind of quit fishing after that. Oh, dude, I, <laughs> I saw like nine under one dock and like several big ones. Yeah. <laughs> And I skipped my worm up under there, and they just all went. Shoo! I mean, they were, dude. It was like there was 17 pounds under this one dock. Yeah. Hey man, y'all bring us any zaxby's? I know. Next time y'all go to zaxby's, dude, just bring extra zaxby's. Told you, microwaveable potatoes. Ooh, I'm gonna eat a whole rotisserie chicken. I hope y'all got two. We did get two. Yeah. Oh three. 
I did learn something over the years of fishing and buying tackle. That when you buy a bunch of tackle before a tournament, things that you think you need, it's a really good way to eliminate that bite. If you only have one, and I think Matt will agree, if you have one or two of something, the bite will continue. Like that's a good pattern. That pattern will just keep going. But when you stock up, like when you say, I'm gonna, oh, I gotta get all these crankbaits and I gotta get all these jigs and I got. You eliminate it right then. Boom. 100%. Done. I, well, I tell you, what did I tell you? I know. I was sitting in the shop the other day and I said, we go to a tournament. Scott does it. I quit doing it because I knew better. Yeah. I learned the hard way. He's smart. Now, wait a minute. You'll use this stuff eventually, so it is what it is. I know. But I never, all the stuff I order pre-tournament, mm -hmm. I never used during that tournament. Yeah. And then I get down there and I'm like, oh, I only got one pack of what they're biting and then I have to make a reorder. So. Right. Live and learn. Yeah. It's the best that way like, to eliminate. That is like five hundred dollars worth of crankbaits and stuff. <laughs> I know, it's the, but it's the best way to eliminate a pattern. I mean, there's people who are going to try to catch them on a crankbait this week, but I just eliminated it for them. Yeah. True story. I walked outside at six fifteen. Black outside. I got my coffee. Sat down. Ate my bagel. Turned around. It's light outside. I got go. Got to go. Cheese somewhere. I thought I saw cheese. There's peanut butter and jelly. I'll, jelly do, I'll do peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Where's the peanut butter? Let me guess, McCoy. You They're forgot the peanut, peanut butter. butter. You're not watching your weight and do this as Roy Hardy or bread. That's a bigger bread. I am watching my weight. That's I, I have to counterbalance the peanut butter and jelly with the 45 okay, calorie then bread. That's, that's actually a good idea. Then. Hey, Jake. Jake, what's up? Tired? Really? <laughs> what are you thinking? I need a bagel. Really? What kind of bagel? Banana nut bread bagel? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so today we need to find um, at the starting spot I had yesterday. I don't think that's that great. I mean, if all else fails, I could go there and catch a few. I think, but we need to find. We found like a big group of fish where I can catch 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 pounds of spots in the morning. Then you go around looking for two or three bites, largemouth wise, and that's the way I'm trying to approach it. So we need to get fine. One didn't take long. Didn't take long. It's a little one. There's another one. It's just a little dude. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's a freaking monster. Guys. Oh 
holy cow okay i don't know what it is i mean if it's a bass dude it's a freaking giant one maybe it's a striper or something big striper i think it's a big striper that was it's cool it was a big one that's a big one when it hit it dude i was like oh my gosh i got a four or five pound largemouth okay it might have been what hit my jerk bait look at that it's lake hartwell special do this all day long dude come in like 40th place in the tournament i'm not gonna weigh this fish but if it's not like two and three quarters it's not a fish beautiful fish though look at that guys it's a beautiful bass check out our little dude and scale here pretty simple actually i hadn't used it for a tournament yet but See why it wouldn't be a good one. So he's two and a quarter. So f five of these, which is a nice fish, beautiful fish. It's gonna weigh 11 pounds, dude. And 11 pounds is gonna do nothing but get your butt kicked because this is the Bassmasters Classic, guys. There is no time for 11 pounds. Beautiful bass. Thank you, bass, for cooperating and giving me confidence. I need bigger ones. There's a bunch in here. There's a, quite a few fish in here, actually. He isn't so big at all. I know you're asking yourself, why am I catching these fish? It's because I could shake these off and not know or think they're big and come over here and literally waste my time. Got to get a, a, a feel for what these size fish are, and these aren't these are not big. Not here. Cannot win it. I cannot catch up big spots. I can go fish the main lake stuff. Main lake, main lake stuff. But this, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's one. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Three pounder. It was a good fish. I, I don't know if it was a three pounder or two and a half or three and a half. It looked decent. Good fish. Dirt shallow. I don't know, man. I don't know, guys. I don't. I don't know what to do here. We gotta. There's no reason why I shouldn't be getting bit on a chatterbait.
Don't we got it again? Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> Catching, catching a few. <laughs> don't, don't. God. Every dot, dude. God, dude, the place is ate up with about 4 30 what have I done today I've confused myself a little bit I, you know the shallow bite deal I don't know if it was just not happening I think it was the temperature I really do I think it was the temperature today in the water dropping about maybe five six degrees I'm thinking to get back so we'll find out you know on one day of practice Kind of what happens tomorrow's supposed to rain all day i don't know what we're going to accomplish tomorrow maybe you know throw a jerk bait swim bait try to find some docks that have some bigger fish on it i did learn i got a lot of confidence in the wacky worm today i got a lot of bites this afternoon i don't know how many of them were good most likely it wasn't tournament winning type fish but if i can get a bonus fish or two out of there you know three three and a half pounder or get a couple big large mouth you know it it, it, it can work and, and the good thing is like where I got bit, that was like a lot of bites. Like each dock had a bite. So, you know, it makes me feel good that I can go into those couple of little pockets there and probably catch a limit pretty quick. And then again, if I get lucky and get a bunch. Here's the deal. Some of those docks were only six, seven, eight feet deep. That's perfect largemouth depth, okay? If all the docks were 20, 15, 20, mostly it's all spots. This time of the year, there's largemouth get on the shallow docks, and those were shallow docks. So, did I have a big largemouth bite? I don't know. I don't think so, but I had a lot of bites. So that being said, we gotta just keep working. Just keep working. Truck is that? What's up? What you doing? Well, what you doing? Wanna go get Scott? Is he ready? Yeah. He just oh, called nice. me a second. See you. Clean cut. Yeah, a little clean shave. Brought that on. Did you lose a bet? No, I just got tired of it. Oh, you I got a know. girlfriend. That's what happened. What? What? <laughs> Shut up. A lot up. of stuff changed when he got a girlfriend. Have you met her in person yet? <laughs> no, let me say this. Has she met you yet? Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess there, there is one for all of us. You know what I mean? Who's <laughs> that? Looky there! What's up, man? Dang, dude! What's up, man? How's it going? We got belly bite. You catching some fish? This place is ate up with them. They're biting, huh? Yeah, that's good. What's that's up, good. dude? You want to go fishing, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I've been fishing one time since last April. Did you know Jake had a girlfriend? <laughs> and she's met him. <laughs> I mean, I, they told me, and I'm like, well, she probably hadn't met him. He's online, got a handle, you know. Oh, he's self Curtis or Bobby. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's never seen her in person. Only talked to her on the phone. She tries to FaceTime her, but she won't do that. And I'm coming out, and I'm like, island out. It's a beautiful morning. Boat's looking good. Sun's like, you know, it's a beautiful sunrise. And I'm coming out of this no-wake zone. And, and there's a there's a striper guide fishing right there, and he's in this big center console. And there's like a whole family, and they're all like waving at me, and I'm like, hey guys, how y'all doing? I get up on plane. What the heck was that? Oh, I ran over one of those don't know movies. I look back, and those people were like, oh. I was like. 
<laughs> down on your seat oh, a little bit. Hey, what's up? Hey. Why you got an iPad right there hey, on your dash? Look what I found. This is, this is what, this is a real car. It's called a Toyota. Oh. Look what I found. What's that? Mango cart. Huh? Mango cart. Krispy Kreme. Oh, uh, yes ma'am. Hey, can I get a, uh, a dozen hot A dozen, uh, uh, glazed donuts. And a yes, dozen sir. chocolate. Um, a dozen chocolate. No, 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 no. No. And, and hang on, we got God more. My. Okay. I mean, you just ordered a dozen chocolate donuts. Yeah. What's we'll wrong <laughs> no, with that? No, no, no. He's okay. ready to fight about it. <laughs> we need, we need one dozen hot and ready. Okay, they're warm, but. Oh. That, that, oh, they warm. warm. They ain't hot. But what the hell is going oh, on? Warm. Jeez. And then, and then the next dozen we want to make mixed. All right, give it one sec. Okay. How love. Is the hot? Or, is that warm one the chocolate? <laughs> I get your chocolate. Did, did you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, and then two blueberry cake. Okay. And two custard filled. All right. Anything else for you? All right. So and, and a medium decaf coffee, please. All right. Hold on. Make that two. Whoa, 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 two. Did, did we get a dozen chocolate? Yes, sir, we did. Okay, good. Or you did. Matt, Thank you. Matt, I got, can I get I got chocolate in the other medium, dozen. Not I'm gonna decaf, get a dozen now. Regular coffee, please. You know, I've been looking for that donut with donuts. the little party-looking thing on top of it. The Mardi Gras? I don't know. It looks like it's having a party, Stop. like a birthday party or something. <laughs> Pull up, dude. There's 25 oh, yeah, cars the behind. Birthday cake batter. We're out of those right now because we're doing the Twix donuts. Because you're doing what? Twix? Yes, sir. Oh, for real? You got Billy. some of them? Billy. Yes, sir. We do. I'll take uh, two of them. All right. You want one of each? One of each? It's two different types. Oh, two different types. Yeah, I'll take them both. Okay. Yeah. All right. We got enough donuts. Break. Should we order more? Oh, my God. That is a lot of donuts. <laughs> that's crazy. We have up there up on top. Oh wow. I'll come back for that one. Okay. I'll save it for you. These are the best, man. I'm just gonna put these in my car. Oh no, dang it! Sound like a tennis player. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. about seven o'clock in the morning all right let me hang out with you guys for a minute here tell you what's going on well behind us here you can see the the lake it is raining like crazy um we're gonna go fishing here in a little bit but it's one of those deals it's like super cold raining we're not even gonna be close to these conditions for the tournament the tournament's gonna be like it was the first two days really more like the first day so you have to be careful. You have to be careful not to assume something. Now, it's good to go out there and graph. It's good to go out there and look for brush under docks. It's good to go out there and find groups of fish in places and then assume that they're going to bite with it completely different conditions. But to go out today to catch fish, like Matt was saying, you could go, you probably pick a crankbait up right now and just run the shorelines and, and probably catch a nice bag of spots. But that's not going to happen in the tournament at all. It's going to be completely different. So why... Why get yourself all sidetracked? So today, Matt's gonna go get his boat worked on, and um, I'm gonna rig a few things up, and then we are gonna go out there in a little bit, and we're gonna graph around a little bit. I think I'm gonna spend a little time looking, uh, side imaging under docks a little bit too, to try to find some of the ones that have a little bit of brush around them. 
you know, some of the shallower docks and run in pockets and see which ones look fishy and which ones don't. Because, you know, you look at a map a lot of times at these places. On the map, it looks great. You're like, oh, that's cool. And you go there. And it's just like the shoreline looks different. And the docks aren't quite the way they were. And the drops aren't exactly right. So, you know, it's good to actually go into some of these little bays and creeks to see what these docks are set up like and how they look. And they look fishy. So, what? so I'm going to eat one of these 16 dozen donuts that you... How many did we get? You ordered like an extra dozen. No, 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 absolutely. I put my order in first, and you're like, no, no, not. stop it right now. Shh. This is Matt yesterday. Stop, stop. Shh. Hey, that, shh. Give me a dozen assorted. I need four of this and four. Shh. Four of these and four of that. You need to cancel your orders because all in my order counts. <laughs> I got everything you wanted. I just want. I just want everybody to know what we got left. We got this. Yes. We got that. So that's what? That's a that's a whole dozen. That's yes. more than a dozen. Yes. There. And I got one in my hand. Oh my gosh. And then really? we have and then we have this. Well who buys those? And then we have that. Who those? So we have about twenty something donuts left. Donut party tonight. <laughs> Dang. Brain is swiped up a little bit. I think I'm trying to find some fish now. I know it's silly. Not going out of here when it's raining. It was dang cold. And you want, I want a clear mind. I just want a clear mind. I'd rather fish my butt off for the next four or five hours than being miserable for two or three and be thinking about coming in and just, yeah. You know, you want to be on point, and I'm on, I feel like I'm on point right now. So, so funny story. Uh, yesterday in practice, I tied this on, and I was like, dude, they might be eating this thing. Stalin's probably wrecking them. So I fired this cast. Well, you saw fire this cast by this dock and I'm like doo, 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 doo. first cast kaboom <laughs> under the dock fighting like crazy I'm like oh my gosh I got like a I got a legit five or six pounder it's pulling so hard I finally fight it and fight it and fight it, it comes up it's a striper <laughs> and as I was fighting it I was like he is going to absolutely blow the tournament away which he still may but I was like look, if I can make one cast and have a five or six pounder this guy's gonna catch 25 a day but it was just a striper so I don't know one other thing real quick I want to give a shout out no sponsor. It's not a sponsor deal. Um, and I've talked about some cool products lately. And this is one of them right here. This is uh, by a company called Fish Obsessed. F-O. Fish Obsessed. And they machine this bracket for all of your different kinds of transducers. So this is for the Garmin LifeScope. It's zero degrees, meaning it's perfectly level with the shaft of the trolling motor which is important there's no no there's no one or two degrees off it's also very well made and it's completely move movable you can move it like that you can go like that so that's perfect con position now for your forward facing or your perspective go like that go back like that boom i can also pull this pin right here and take this off and put it up here and then turn this this way so if I was in a lot of grass and I didn't want this thing getting stuck in the in the grass I can go up that way so if I was in shallow grass so now I'm it's good so I like the mount a lot uh, I saw it on a few guys boats this year and I was like dude that's sweet so I called the guys up I ordered one I have another one too so I'm gonna do double mounts for next week but anyways fish obsessed so we'll drop a link in the description or just google fish obsessed I'm sure but if you have forward-facing sonar um, I recommend getting that bracket. Big thumbs up. Are you shivering? Dude? I'm so cold. You're shivering? <laughs> like yeah, the whole camera's like this. No, we're getting body stabilization. Oh, It'll it's be like fine. this. I can see. He's so cold. All right, dude. I'll be back in it. Dark. Dark. Right. Yeah. About six o'clock.
Oh my gosh. Look at them all right there, dude. Those are all spots. Laying on the bottom. Dude, that's crazy. That's pretty wild, actually. Those were all spots. I had no idea. I thought they were like something else. Those spots will be under that dock. I mean, there's like 40 of them right there. Come on right there. There's some fish breaking right here. Pulling this creek. Let's see what's going on. Ready, rat. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I got him. Got a bite. He wasn't a good one, though. I don't think he was a good one. Was definitely a bite, though. church thing tonight actually so we're at Brushy Creek Church here in Brushy Creek South Carolina I believe and um, so yeah this is this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go in there and hang out and tell a little fishing stories and a little testimony and stuff so how you doing Chris Chris good to see yeah, you good to see you man let's go let's move <laughs> okay all right so we're glad you're here it's gonna be a great night. Uh, we're excited about it. Let me just tell you what's gonna happen so you'll know. In just a few moments, we're gonna introduce the pros, bring them up. Uh, we're gonna let them talk about fishing. We have two microphones. We have one right there and one right over. It's missing. Um, it's right was, that, was that directed at me? He was watching the hair. Let me say this one up. There. I had to bathe in holy water for a week straight just to get that off of me, okay? I was at a certain lake one time, and I had a, a guy in the boat. I was flipping it and, and, and bent fish on the bed. Finally hooked him, got him all the way up to the boat. He came off. I said every word that existed. I did. I lost it. I blew my witness as a Christian, and then my partner caught him two casts later. So it was a bad deal. So I, go ahead and answer whoever wants to. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I'll <laughs> just I'll go on this one. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's tough. I mean, there's no easy way around it. You're doing the math in your head. I know we've all lost those fish, and you start, you try not to do it, but you're always, like, I have a two pounder, if I got rid of the two pounder, that was an eight pounder. I like, was in a net six, oh, I would have given, you know, and you start thinking in your mind all these things, and that's the worst thing you can do, obviously. The positive is, say to yourself, I got a bite, and it was a big one, and I'm making good decisions. Now it's got to get in the boat, obviously. So, you know, it, it, it's a tough one. I, there's not a real good answer other than, again, you're, make, you're making the right cast, you're getting the fish to react, you, you're, you're making good decisions. And if you can just keep telling yourself that, a lot of times another opportunity will come about. We, we do a Bible study for the pros before the tournament starts, but uh, all of these guys, yeah, I know them. And, uh, and they all have relationships with Christ. And all of them tell you that, that fishing is important. But the most important thing in their lives is their relationship with God. And we're going to talk about that now. And we're going to have three of these guys uh, share their testimony, three or four of them. 
you know, for me, when I was growing up, I went to church uh, kind of when you were supposed to. You know, Christmas and, you know, Thanksgiving and Mother's Day and just kind of when you're supposed to. And I'd go and I, I would, you know, I'd open the door for people and I would, I'd put a little money in the tithing tray. I'd make change sometimes, though. <laughs> but, you know, I, I had a plan. In my mind, if you had asked me back then, you know, if, if something happened to you, if you got killed in a car accident right now or if something tragic happened, where would you go? I would have told you that I, I'm going to go to heaven because... Because I I, 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 got a, I have a relationship with God. I know who Jesus is. I've gone to church a few times. And I'm a good guy, you know. I, I, I don't say too many bad words. I'm not an axe murderer. I'm, 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 I probably, I'll probably get there and he'll probably say, you, you're, you're a good dude. Come on in. And that was my plan. And um, that was really s silly on my part. You know why I know my plan wouldn't work to get me to heaven? Because I just made it up. Me making up some plan in my own mind of how I'm going to get to heaven and leaving Jesus Christ out of it and, and, and him down on the cross and being resurrected and everything that he did for us and our sins, leaving that part out was silly on my part. But I didn't know. You know, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't know. And so my whole life I, 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 I went along and I remember driving down. As I got older and I got married, I, I knew that I needed, I could hear the knock. I had friends in my life that were praying for me, you know, and, and I started feeling, so So I'll say this, God, pray for, for the unsaved. Pray for them. And let them know that you're praying for them because that does plant a seed. And it, and it puts a little water on that seed every time. And, and even though I didn't know anything about how to get saved, Art Ferguson would tell me things that he was praying for me. And other friends of, of, that I had would say they're praying for me. And I remember, you know, I thought, well, I'm gonna, I was driving to Pasco, Mississippi, and I was going to meet a co-angler who was going to fish with me. And I remember turning on the, the Christian music, and it's, it didn't even sound good. I mean, I was trying to make it sound right. I mean, I was like, yeah, I'm listening to it, and it just, it just wasn't my thing, but I was trying. And I remember praying going down I-10, Lord, put somebody or something in my, in my path that, that will help change me and teach me how to get saved. And when I pulled into Pascagoula and I met this gentleman named Randy Clark, and we're just kind of catching up a little bit. First time I met him, he was a friend of a friend, fishing as a co-angler. And I said, Randy, what do you do? And he said, he said well, I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to spend three days in the boat together. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. So we went out, we fished, and, and everything was great. And, and he was, you know, he was telling me stories about the Bible, and, and he was planting seeds the whole time in the boat with me and, and, and I was feeling encouraged and, and and I didn't like just I still didn't really know how to get saved and, and I had a really great event. Matter of fact I won the tournament. I won Pasco River, my first FLW tournament win I ever had. I won the tournament running all the way to Pasco all, all over to uh, Mobile Bay, crazy crazy story. But I didn't win in the tournament and I become even bigger friends with Randy at the time, and he was he was a pastor, and he traveled around and did speaking gigs. He didn't have his, a, a, a church that he spoke at, so he could travel with me a little bit that year. I said, "Listen, if you want to fish some of these coming events, I'd love for you to hang out." And so, for the whole course of a year, he had fish in the boat with me at different events, and he would keep planting seeds and planting seeds. And a whole year goes by, and we're in Pasigula again the next year for the. And so I'm defending champion, and. We're in this, well, I remember, I, re, I don't remember the name of the creek, but we're over in, in Biloxi Bay. And I remember we're in this little, it was real quiet. He was telling a story about the Bible. And I'm standing on the front of my boat, and, and I felt something come over me. I started feeling the presence of the Lord. And I started getting chills on my neck. And, and, and Randy was just, he was not even looking at me. He was casting out the back of the boat, just telling a story like he always does. And I literally felt the Holy Spirit come down on me and, 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 and encouraged me to, to drop to one knee and to get saved. And, and I had tears running down my face. I'm standing on the front of that boat. And I remember watching tears hit my tennis shoes. And Randy's back there. He had no idea that I was being touched like this. And I remember different emotions. Like I was scared. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. And I, and I kind of, I kind of fought it a little bit, not out of anger or anything. I just was scared. I didn't really know what to do. So I, three or four minutes goes by, and all of a sudden that feeling started going away, and my tears dried up. 
and he's still talking. And I felt so like awful. I, I felt like that was my chance to become a Christian. And God just did something special. And I just told him to get back with me later. And that scared me to death. Like, I, and I, I didn't turn around and tell him that. I got, it was just like that was in me. And I told God to get back with me later. And that was in February. And in, and in March, Randy came down to Cluiston to hang out for a little bit. And he started, to, he was telling, he loves to be a great storyteller. And he was telling stories in the Bible. And, and, and I didn't have that crazy feeling. I didn't have those, those, those chills running down my back and tears running down my face. But I told Randy, I said, listen, man, I'm ready. I want to I wanna, I wanna get saved. And we walked out in my yard. I leaned up against my boat. And, and I prayed the sinner's prayer with him. And it was awesome. It changed my life. It, it changed my marriage. It changed my friendships. It changed me personally. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I, I am there. I, I'm like connected now with Jesus Christ. And the interesting and the neat part about my testimony, and the reason I tell you that I told God to get back to me later, is I think we've all probably done that. And there might be some people in this crowd that maybe said, I told him to get back with me later, and that might be the worst thing I've ever done, and I don't want to get saved now, or I'm probably not worthy of getting saved. When I got saved, leaned up against my boat, I didn't have chills running down my back before that happened. I didn't have the tears. I just knew that I, that's my point, is that you can get saved tonight. You don't have to wait for the miraculous special thing to happen in your life to get saved, for Jesus to show you that he loves you, and he'll write your name down the Lamb's Book of Life. You can do it right now, tonight. Because he changed my life. He would have changed my life amazingly if I'd have done it that day standing in front of that boat with tears running down my face. But he did it the exact same way. I'm just as saved after that. You know what I mean? So that's my testimony, and it, and it, and it changed my life tremendously. You know, for me, it's like there's a verse, and I like simple verses. It's in red, it's in the Bible, Luke. 1123, I believe. And it basically says this. You're either for me or you're against me. And it's in red. It's pretty simple, straightforward. I love reading verses that Jesus said out of his mouth because those are, to me, the most important. So, you're either for me or you're against me. And when I was a kid, I was that fence rider guy. Because I would go to church a little bit and I would do, you know. So, I, and, and, and as, now 20 years later, I, I, I need to keep saying that verse. I, I'm either for me or against you. I can't be that fence rider you know, you can't have one foot over the fence. You, to be a Christian and to be an example to other people, you have to, you have to live the life. You have to plant those seeds. You have to water uh, those seeds to your family and friends. And um, so it's an ongoing learning thing with me. Uh, you know, I try, to, I try to do as much as I can by listening to good music now. By the way, Christian music sounds awesome now. <laughs> I literally, after, after I got saved, I turned the music on. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, it just sounded so different. Um, so I just encourage all of you guys. There's ne there's never a wrong time to get saved, and 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 just keep keep planting seeds, keep putting water, keep encouraging your friends. So that's that's my testimony. <laughs>
right there. There's a limited quantity, but six of them saved a bunch of money. And limited packs. bundles, they, uh, yeah. they sell out really fast. So you, it just depends on the inventory if they can sell 200 bundles or 300 bundles or 400 bundles. But when it's going out to thousands of people, you know, you got to be quick. Yeah. So you can sign up for free and it's lundertext.com, then you should get the text messages. But when you get a text message, the issue is that yeah, we, get my phone. we had a couple people get a text message and they're like, and then they go to buy the deal, but if they didn't enter their credit card information, then they have to go through and enter their credit card information. And then they don't get the bundle and then they get upset. So you can sign up for free without a credit card, but you can sign up for free with a credit card. That way your information's already in there. If you get a deal sent to your phone, you can get it super fast. And you don't have to worry about it selling out. Because some of our deals, like, fast fast like like five minutes fast sell out because it just depends because it's limited inventory so there's a hat they sold some hats of the day but here's one there's a chat that sold right there switchblade tungsten it's a tungsten which is sweet oh, yeah. by queen blade that was queen tackle those are good ones that right there bundle saved half it was 40 dollars retail it was 26 dollars that sold out i think in 15 minutes and there's another one right here that's but, sold out. I don't know. This one sold out quick, but it's a four-pack bundle, four different colors, uh, big bite baits. They're like a fluke-style bait. $8.99. 50, yeah. Almost 50% off. And look, when that one popped up, I bought it. It was a limited quantity, but six of them. I forget exactly what I paid for them, but it was like half, basically. Let's move houses. It's a classic house. We upgraded a little bit. Nice. Okay. Dude, check it out. Got a Bassmaster's classic pool. No rooms, but a place to chill. Okay, bedroom two. Bedroom three. Oh, look, there's your bed. Nice. Yeah. Dylan can sleep in there. Pretty cool night last night, actually. We did that church event. There was a couple hundred people there, and it was great to be able to share my testimony and also hear the great testimonies from the other anglers. And and uh, what, what a special night. But we, we, we've got the boat pretty much rigged out. Um, tomorrow is our official day of practice. And I've got a few more little things to kind of rig up. The weather, look at this, guys. I mean, totally different than what we had in practice other than the first day um, I think tomorrow is going to be similar weather might even be a little warmer so yeah and tomorrow's weather is going to be probably a little more warm than it is nice right now the biggest thing with today's weather it's dead calm and super sunny and what does that mean here's what it means for me I think the largemouth the shallow largemouth are going to play pretty major in this event. I know the big spots are going to play as well. I haven't personally figured out how to catch the spots out deep. I, I haven't found like uh, enough of them out deep to really, and I'm going to try tomorrow a little bit. I catch a lot of docks, but I, I don't, maybe the big ones will move up there. I will say this, and this is a good thing about fishing, is that over a course of a week, things change. So I went to the docks last week during the official practice and I was catching a lot of two pounders. Fast forward a week, the females could move up on those docks. So it actually could be very surprising. Like all of a sudden you roll up on those docks thinking you're gonna catch you know, 10 pounds and you end up with 15. That could happen. The other thing that, that, I, that, I'm, gonna, that I'm kinda banking on a little bit is the shallow largemouth bite. You feel this boat right now? The boat, this, this color, this dark color, that is hot. That is hot. 
That's like 80 degrees right there, even though the air temperature is 60. What does that mean? That means the floats on those docks, the black floats on those docks, especially those shallow docks, they heat up when there's no wind like this. It radiates the heat out. It creates like a blanket effect under those, under those docks. And those bigger female bass that try to incubate their eggs, they'll, they'll get under those docks because it's warm, it's calm. They'll get under there. Now, it's a little harder to catch them when there's no wind, but it's really warming up that shallow water fast. So I think that bite's gonna get better and better every single day, and I'm banking on that a little bit. So tomorrow's our first day of official practice, our only day of official practice. So I'm gonna take you guys along. We're gonna do a whole other video on that. Um, thank you for hanging out throughout this practice video here. And uh, tomorrow, it's neat. We're gonna do the official blast off. We're gonna hang out with fans in the morning. We come back in at our exact check-in time at three o'clock. And uh, so it's kind of like a tournament day in a way. So that's how we're gonna approach it. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna fish fast, efficient, and try to make some good decisions. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I've dreamed about this tournament for my entire life, my entire career. And uh, we're just a few days away from starting this. So I cannot wait to share this experience with you guys. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to click all the videos. And uh, we love you, and we'll see you soon. Bam!